Good morning, everybody. I'm here today to talk about moxibustion as a general concept and why it is so important in Chinese medicine. Uh, I think my experience in most schools is that it is not taught as a major component of our medicine, which I think is a mistake. Interestingly enough, the word that we translate as acupuncture in Chinese is zhen jiu. Zhen means needle. Jiu means heat or fire or moxibustion. So if we don't use moxa in our practice or if we don't teach it in our schools or don't find some way to learn how to use various types of moxibustion, we're leaving out an entire half of our acupuncture practice. The important thing to know here is that moxibustion as a generic term and as a group of applications does not do the same thing that needles do. There are certain things that needles are good at. There are other things that moxa is good at. Notably, in the Neijing Su Wen, there is a line that says, when needles do not reach, you must use moxa. It doesn't say, you might use moxa, or you could use moxa, or you should think about moxa. It says, if needles do not reach, you must use moxa, which implies that, that moxibustion is a more powerful tool. Now, moxibustion can be a problem in certain clinic situations for a variety of reasons. It can be smoky and smelly, especially this form of it can be. Um, it can be an insurance issue. Uh, it can cause burns. Certainly there are problems with moxa if it's not used properly and correctly. Um, you might even be allergic to the smoke. Many people are. But the good news is there are many other applications, many other kinds of moxa, besides just this big smoky stick. And so I want to tell you what those are. For example, if you sent your patient home with a bag of bulk herbs and told them to cook it and make a, make a fumigation out of it that they were going to breathe in for bronchitis, or tightness in the chest, or cough, or some other lung condition, that is considered, herbal fumigation is considered a type of moxa. For example, you could do the same thing and tell your patient to stick their hand down inside the hot water if they had arthritis in their wrist, for example, or their feet, or their ankles, or their fingers. That would be a type of moxibustion. Um, hot wax dips for people with arthritic hands is considered a type of moxibustion. Your TDP lamp um, is called dianjiu, which means uh, electric moxibustion. So moxibustion as a generic term has a much wider application than just big smoky sticks. Um, chemical applications, uh, such as hot pa pepper patches that you put on sore joints, or mustard plasters that are grandparents used to use mustard plasters for coughing. They put it on people's backs and of course it causes a, a minor chemical burn on the skin uh, and it does exactly the same thing that moxibustion does. Uh, you can have uh, liquid moxibustion applications that you use with a hot towel or a hot lamp or um, a heating pad or some other way to provide the heat to push the medicinals into the body. So that's another application. Even hot stone massage could be considered a form of moxibustion. So what could be more fun than that? If you've ever had a hot stone <laughs> massage, then that's a, a really lovely and beautiful form of moxibustion. Uh, and last but not least, which I've covered in other videos, is thread moxibustion, which makes almost no smoke at all and is very well received by patients and highly effective. So, um, what does moxa do? Moxa warms the channel and scatters cold. It stops pain. It, um, it um, I'm sorry, it quickens the blood and resolves blood stasis, which is very important, it, even that by itself, because needles cannot do that very well. Using the regular fine needle that we call an acupuncture needle um, doesn't really quicken the blood. So if you have older patients with blood stasis, 
uh, or gynecological cases with blood stasis. Just sticking needles in those people is not going to get rid of the blood stasis, where moxa can. So uh, I encourage you to learn some applications of moxibustion that will work in your office environment and use them on your patients, and you'll find that it will improve your results on a daily basis. If you are unfamiliar with moxa and you need to learn more, I highly recommend this book by Lorraine Wilcox, um, Clinical uh, Moxibustion, a Modern Clinical Handbook, in which she talks about 30 or 40 different ways of doing moxa. She has um, over 100, maybe more, illustrations in this book. You can make your own moxa toys and tools using the methods that she uh, describes in great detail. And, um, and in the back, she has a treatment formulary for 250 diseases and the MOXA application for treating that disease. So I, this is a wonderful resource that I do endorse if you are interested in learning more about MOXA. And Lorraine also has a course covering this material that we videoed. So you can actually watch her doing some of these uh, techniques and creating MOXA tools from scratch if you uh, find that information interesting and useful. You can go to bluepoppy.com and take a look at all of Lorraine's products. Thanks for joining me this morning.